This is Barry Zelma, Zelma on insurance. I am an attorney who is retired from the active practice of law and now spend my time as an insurance claims consultant, an insurance claims expert witness, an author, and producer of these videos. Today I'd like to talk about construction defect litigation and considerations that should be taken for early settlement of such a lawsuit. It should be and is an axiom followed by almost every attorney that the sooner a suit is settled, the less it will cost the defendants. Invariably, as suits drag on, as discovery is received and analyzed, the positions of the parties become less amenable to compromise. If defendants and their counsel believe that liability against a defendant or group of defendants is reasonably clear, the parties and their counsel should work to bring the parties together to attempt an early settlement. Some of the reasons for the early settlement include adverse publicity. The reputation of a builder, a developer, an engineer, or architect can be destroyed by adverse publicity. Wide dissemination of a single charge of negligent construction can cause the person charged to lose business. Early settlement, if appropriate, can eliminate the concern for damages caused by adverse publicity. Preferably, settlement should be reached before suit is filed, and appropriate language in the settlement agreement should make the settlement confidential. The confidentiality agreement should include an agreement to pay liquidated damages, a damage amount set in the settlement agreement to the other party if the confidentiality of the settlement is breached. Adverse publicity or adverse reaction from state and federal regulating agencies does not happen often, but when it does, it is difficult, if not impossible, to control. Developers and contractors active in the construction trade often find that they are easy targets for the media or politicians, since the perception is that the public generally dislikes them. The public and public officials have little sympathy for major real property developers who are considered to be exceedingly wealthy and inconsiderate of the home-buying public. Adverse publicity can poison the jury pool against the defendants and, as a result, increase the value of the plaintiff's case beyond the actual damages incurred. Quick and appropriate settlement can avoid the adverse publicity. If the parties do their job of preparation properly, this situation will be avoided. There are some situations where there is a premium for early settlement because of considerations of the plaintiff. The rare high-profile plaintiff or claimant may cause more problems than can be resolved by a long, even though winning, fight. Court-imposed terms or sanctions are also a reason for an early settlement. There is the potential for court-imposed terms or sanctions if liability is determined to be clear. In several cases, courts have proposed sanctions including substantial attorney's fees against clients as opposed to attorneys who cause papers or pleadings to be filed in connection with litigation that were not well-founded in fact or for the purpose of delay or harassment. Such sanctions could be assessed against plaintiffs, defendants, or the insurance companies that are paying for their defense. Federal Rules of Civil Procedure, Rule 11 sanctions for frivolous actions or defenses could be expensive as well as embarrassing. 
Violating Rule 11 by filing an improper suit or defense can, in addition to sanctions, gain the undying enmity of the trial judge and therefore increase or reduce the value of the plaintiff's or the defendant's case. Bad facts and serious injuries also should require work to reach a rapid, if and early settlement of any lawsuit where there are such bad facts and serious injuries. Some lawsuits, as often most defendants refuse to accept, are based on clear liability. Bad facts and serious injuries make the case one to settle as quickly as possible. Such a case is likely to be expensive to defend. If the attorney's reaction to the fact pattern is disbelief or horror, and the first impulse is to trade the suit to another attorney or law firm, it is a case that must be settled quickly. For example, the collapse of a terminal at the Charles de Gaulle Airport in France only one year after it was built crushing to death several passengers, is the type of case that, if it occurred in the United States, would be preferable to settle as soon as possible and before any suit is filed. Bad facts and serious injuries get more expensive with time. Such cases are ripe to be settled quickly. These cases should not be aggressively defended, but rather should be handled with empathy and generosity. If the defendant and the defendant's counsel know more about the liability of the defendant than the plaintiff and the plaintiff's counsel, where the defendant is sure to lose and be compelled to pay a large judgment, it is always in the best interest of the defendant to open settlement negotiations immediately. If the plaintiff makes a demand equal to or less than what the defendant knows to be the value of the case, the demand should be immediately accepted without negotiation. It will shock the plaintiff's lawyer, but once the settlement is made, the case is done and a great deal of expense will be avoided. There is no reason no reason to delay the settlement of a case of clear liability where the defendant who knows he was liable and his insurer also knows the liability is clear, the money should be put forward as quickly as possible and should work to settle before there is a potential for the case getting worse injuries becoming more serious, liability becoming obvious because the plaintiffs won't settle if they know they have a slam-dunk case. Legal issues also arise. If the case is not settled, bad law may potentially be established. Bad case law has almost always resulted from cases that should have been settled but were not because someone was stubborn or unthinking. One example of such a case is the California Supreme Court decision in White v. Western Title, a 1985 Supreme Court decision made on the last day that three of the Supreme Court justices were voted out of office and were obviously a bit perturbed at the insurance industry. The White versus Western title claim was a $20,000 claim that resulted in a bad faith suit after litigation between the insurer and the insured had begun by a declaratory relief action. The insurer thought it was improper to admit evidence of its conduct after it was forced into an adversary position with the insured. 
the insurer lost a trial and appealed the $20,000 judgment to the Supreme Court of California. As a result, in California, evidence of settlement negotiations cannot be placed in evidence in any case, except if that case is against an insurer and the evidence is used to prove the bad faith of the insurer. The decision has been roundly criticized, but is still the law in California because a stubborn insurer insisted on continuing through the courts and appeals with a case that could easily have been settled for $20,000 or less. Of course, Western Title was then stuck with a bad faith case where both tort damages and punitive damages were available to the plaintiff. A loss that should never have happened had anyone with good reason decided to settle the case early. Now, the converse is also true. Consider Royal Globe versus Superior Court, a 1979 California Supreme Court case, which authorized third-party plaintiffs to sue insurers for violation of the Fair Claims Practices Act, even though the claimant had no relationship with the insurer, would never have been reversed if Fireman's Fund had not stubbornly refused to settle the claim of Murati Shalal versus Fireman's Fund, a 1988 decision of the California Supreme Court that reversed the Royal Globe case. The Murati Shalal case recognizes the abuses of claimants, reversed Royal Globe, and held that only the State Department of Insurance could enforce the Fair Claim Settlement Act. The decision to go forward with an appeal and with a long trial and not settle must be made carefully with the advice of experienced trial and appellate counsel. It may be in the best interest of both parties to allow the decision to stand rather than take a chance on excessive legal fees for appellate counsel and a bad result that could be made worse by the decision of the courts of appeal and cost the defendant insurer hundreds of millions of dollars in future cases. In some cases, there may be a legal principle involved that needs to be resolved, as was the principle in the Murati Shalal case, so that a precedent can be established or reversed. Occasionally, this is a legitimate reason for taking a case to trial rather than settling. The decision to move forward to set precedent should be tempered with the realization that the party filing the appeal may face the policy possibility of an FRCP 11 sanctions if the case is lost. Construction defect cases also bring multiple claims, and these multiple claim situations are an incentive for an early settlement. In multiple claims, such as claims by individual homeowners of a 300-unit development, With each resident claiming serious bodily injuries as a result of a construction defect that allowed the growth of illness-causing fungi or bacterial infestations, there is a risk that the available insurance and the available assets of the defendants could be exhausted before all the claims are known and paid. The defendant should avoid exhausting available insurance limits early unless it can avoid all exposures faced by the claim defects. If an insurer pays out its limits fast to avoid defense costs and exposes the developer's personal assets with known claims pending, the developer may seek damages from its insurer and add claims for serious punitive damages. The duty of good faith requires consideration of interests of the insured over those of the insurer. If the limits are low, exhausting the limits with one claimant may expose the insured to defense costs and excessive judgments beyond the available limits of liability. 
The defendant and its counsel should encourage its insurer to protect the insured from all claimants within policy limits, if at all possible, and seek a demand from the plaintiffs for their limits of all policies available to the defendants. As one case of the California Court of Appeals said, quote, when a claimant offers to settle an excess claim within policy limits, the insurer must evaluate the settlement offer in good faith and consider the interest of the insured equally with its own. This was Coe versus State Farm, a 1977 case, where had they accepted the settlement offer, State Farm would have left its insured Mr. Coe with a exposure to other defendants for the same action, and that would have been an act of bad faith. And refusing, therefore, to accept the settlement was an act of good faith, contrary to what Mr. Coe claimed. An insurer who refuses to accept a reasonable settlement offer within policy limits in violation of its duty of good faith and fair dealing, is liable for the entire judgment against the insured, even if it exceeds policy limits. This video was adapted from my book, Construction Defects and Insurance, Volume 8 which is available both as a Kindle book and as a paperback from Amazon.com and can details about which are available at my website, Zalma.com, by clicking on the link to the Insurance Claims Library. If you found this video to be useful, please refer it to your colleagues and sign up as a member of my blog by subscribing to the blog at zelma.com slash blog and you will be advised of future blog posts and future videos. Thank you for your attention.